Welcome to the video on music reference sources. This video will introduce various types of reference sources, including music dictionaries, encyclopedias, and music bibliographies. We'll talk about the considerations for evaluating reference sources, and we'll talk a little bit about how to use reference sources in your research. Why use a reference source when starting your research? Some sources will help you to get background information on the topic that you're interested in, Others might help when deciding if the topic you're researching is too broad or too narrow. Some of these reference sources include special tools or features, such as a composer's works list or a bibliography that can point you to further information on your topic. Many libraries have a separate area devoted to reference materials. They usually can't be checked out of the library, but are there for quick in-library use. These tools are there to help you find quick bits of information, like the date of an important event, a major achievement of an individual, or a definition of a term or a concept. In the Education and Music Library, we have a small reference collection that is meant for in-library use only, but most of our reference materials are actually integrated right into the general collection, so you can borrow them and take them home. There are typically two ways that you might want to use a reference source. One is to get background information on a topic. Wikipedia is a popular example of an online reference source that gets used for background information all the time. If you're writing a paper on music during the time of the French Revolution, for example, you might go to Wikipedia and read all about the French Revolution to get some context for what was going on in that country in the late 1700s. This isn't information that you're going to quote or paraphrase in your paper because this part of the research process is more to help you figure out what type of information you'll need to write in the paper and find for the paper later on. The second reason you might want to use a reference source is to find specific facts to support a point that you're making in your paper. For example, you might want to find out what the scoring is for the opera The Marriage of Figaro and the date that it was first performed. If you want to get this information from a reliable source, you might want to go to the Grove Dictionary of Music look up the article on Mozart, and go to his works list. You could certainly look up the same information using a Google search, but you might have to scroll through many sites, and you also might not be sure if that information is reliable to use or not. While reference sources are considered to be generally authoritative because they are published works meant for scholarship and research, some of them might contain dated information if they were published too far in the past. Depending on the publication date, they might be missing entries for notable people or events. Let's consider something like the Oxford Encyclopedia of Popular Music, which was published last in 2009. It actually has a great entry on Jay-Z's Black Album, which came out in 2003, but you're not going to find any information on Lizzo's album, Cause I Love You, which was released in 2019. Some music dictionaries have a different author for each entry, such as the Grove Dictionary Music. Online, when you're looking at a dictionary of music, especially when it's freely available, you might not be able to see the name of the author at all, or in the case of Wikipedia, it might be written by multiple anonymous sources. For this reason, you're likely to want to find a more reliable source than Wikipedia to verify that your information is correct. Typically, reference sources go through an extensive editing process, and they are often published by an academic press. The editor and the publisher should be clearly identified. As with most library resources, these materials are often targeted at different audiences. Most of the dictionaries in the university library collection are targeted at academic undergraduate or graduate level of research. We also have some dictionaries that are for the general public or for a younger, less experienced audience. Be sure to verify who the source is intended for. The writing and tone of reference sources is meant to be neutral and unbiased. These sources are focused on presenting factual information. It's not always possible for authors and publishers to be completely unbiased. Decisions about what information gets included, what facts are considered notable, or what individuals are worthy of inclusion in a dictionary or encyclopedia are all decisions that can be affected by the author's bias. While there are many types of reference sources out there, the ones that we're focused on in this video are music dictionaries, encyclopedias, and bibliographies of music. Dictionaries provide information using an alphabetical arrangement of entries, whether the subject for the entry is a person, a topic, or a term. 
Encyclopedias function similarly to dictionaries, except for that the entries are generally much longer. Bibliographies of music have a variety of purposes that are slightly different from dictionaries and encyclopedias. Uh, they can include lists of music, such as repertoire lists, research guides that list research on a particular topic, they can be thematic catalogs that list a composer's works and themes from them, or they can be discographies of recorded music. The Standard Music Dictionary is the New Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, which is found in a library database called Oxford Music Online. You'll often hear this resource referred to as Grove Music or simply Grove among music scholars. Even though it is named a dictionary, it is so extensive that it appears much more like an encyclopedia with long detailed entries. It was last published in print in 2001, but the online version has grown beyond that because new content is added and updated every year. Please refer to the video on Grove Music Online for more information on how to use this core research tool. Grove is a great go-to resource when researching a topic, but there are many more specific dictionaries out there in the library that might be more appropriate if you have a specific information need. National dictionaries are devoted to people, places, and events from a particular country. One of the drawbacks of using Grove is that it has a very American focus, and so sometimes composers from other countries are missing. If you were researching the Montreal jazz musician Charles Reed Biddle, you won't find an entry in Grove music at all. However, the Canadian Encyclopedia has an entry with a short biography, a discography, and a bibliography with further reading. Subject dictionaries cover musical genres and instruments. This type of dictionary is great for looking up musical terms related to a specific genre. For example, you might want to learn more about the song The Angel of Music from the musical Phantom of the Opera by An Andrew Lloyd Webber. Grove Music has a good entry on the composer Andrew Lloyd Webber, but it doesn't have a specific entry on Phantom of the Opera. In this case, you might want to check a musical theater dictionary or encyclopedia to get more detail on that specific work. Term dictionaries offer translations, pronunciations, and etymologies of specific words. This includes the history and meaning of a musical term. These can be especially helpful for singers or when you want to provide some context about a musical style within the context of writing program notes. A good starting place to see some of the key music dictionaries and encyclopedias is by using the music research guide. Uh, so to get here, you're going to go to libguides.usask.ca slash music and um, then go to the dictionaries and encyclopedias tab on the left hand side of the page. From here, you can see that we've highlighted some of the key uh, music dictionaries and encyclopedias, including Grove Music Online and on the right hand side of the page, some uh, topical uh, dictionaries and encyclopedias that might be of interest. You can click on any of these titles to get more information. A bibliography is defined as a selective or exhaustive listing of sources published on a topic. We also have many book length bibliographies in the library collections. You may be interested in the bibliographies of individuals, which are located in the ML 134 section of the library. These bibliographies are sometimes called bio-bibliographies or research guides because they contain some biographical information alongside research sources. You will often find short descriptions of the composer's life and works accompanied by lists of relevant research. When using a source like this, you may want to take notes of the sources that sound particularly useful to you or relevant to your topic so that you can find them later. This slide shows an example of a page from a research guide on Canadian music. You can see at the top there's a citation for the source. This will help you to find it in the library collection or online. Then you can see there's some short paragraphs about what this source contains, how it might be useful to your research, and what to expect when looking at it. The reason why the annotation is there just is just to help you save time instead of looking up the source and then discovering that it is or isn't useful for your research. Very few of these bibliographies of music exist as e-resources. So if you want to consult one, I suggest searching for it in the library catalog and requesting it from the library. Here's how you can search for a bibliography on a specific person, such as a composer. First, you're going to go to the library website. 
library.usask.ca. Click on the library catalog link underneath this search bar. Go to the advanced search button. On the search page you are going to enter the name of the composer that you are researching in the first box. I'm going to search for um, Murray Adaskin. Uh, you can either put just the last name of the composer or you can put the last name and a comma and then the first name. If you put in Murray Adaskin without reversing the names, uh, the search won't work. On another line of the search box, you're going to put in bibliography. And then just hit the go button or press enter. You can see here it's showing that we retrieved 19 items and the first item is an annotated catalog of Murray Adaskin's music. If you want to learn more about this item you can click on the title. It says it includes a discography and bibliographical references. Uh, if you want to request this item for pickup from the library use this blue button at the top of the page and then just follow the steps after that. This video introduced the concept of music reference sources, including various types of music dictionaries and bibliographies of music. We discussed how to evaluate these sources and what to consider when establishing that they might be the right tool for your work. You should have a better understanding now of how different types of dictionaries and bibliographies serve a different purpose and may be needed in different research scenarios.